Well, here we are. Week six of Crescendo, Crescendo is officially passed, and all of the regular season events have concluded. Tonight, we're going to take a look at four hot topics in the community as a whole. We'll break down the current game meta from week six that we saw at some regionals and district championships, a discussion related to match schedules, district championship alliance selections, and fun things in Houston that your team could take advantage of while attending the championship. All of this and more coming up on this edition of FRC Roundup. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your robotics competition needs. Celebrating 20 years of quality robotics parts and superior service, Animark employees have over 200 years of first-team experience. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to Animark.com for high-quality and affordable solutions. Support Fun's content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fund members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the Join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. Welcome to the show. If you have not caught our show previously, FRC Roundup is where we take a look at important topics currently happening in FRC, highlight some discussion points about events that may have happened, strategy, or anything that correlates with FRC. If you, the fun community, think there is a topic that we should discuss on FRC Roundup, please feel free to ping me on the fun Discord, and I'll be more than happy to take a look at it. If you're not familiar with me, my name is Nick Mathis, and I'm currently in the first in Michigan region and a mentor on Team 33, the Killer Bees. And I'm Connor McBride, mentor for Team 166 Chop Shop and an MC and game announcer in the New England district. Our guest tonight is Alex Holtum. Alex is the director of IT at Hemlock Schools and the drive coach for Michigan State Champs Team 5712 Hemlock's Gray Matter. Alex, welcome to the show. Yeah, thanks so much, guys. It's a pleasure to be here. And uh, yeah, still trying to recover from that long weekend, but... Jumping into our first topic of the night, we're going to be taking a look into the Crescendo meta overall throughout the week and where it turned into through DCMPs. Um, we saw a few interesting things and how, you know, specific things correlated, you know, at the Michigan State Championship and whatnot leading other events. I know, Alex, we're going to highlight some of your events or, you know, how your specific alliance attributed to some of that. But, um, you know, I'm going to go ahead and start up. There are a lot of things that we saw throughout the weekend, um, you know, happened at East Bay this past weekend where... Um, we saw some high scores continue to allow him being broke throughout the weekend. So we're actually going to take a look into East Bay match eight first. Um, there's a similar strategy that was ran between two alliances that I want to highlight um, at this event. So uh, moving into this, what you can see here is, you know, Bread kind of clean, playing that cleanup position. Red does a good job to get a narrow lead out of autonomous building into here. And moving further into, you know, what it looks like and how this game might be played at the championship, I think that the Red Alliance does an interesting job of, you know, showcasing what might be seen here um, moving forward. So um, what you can see here is they shift into Teleop. Um, we see that, you know, the Bread robot kind of playing cleanup while they get a stockpile of rings. And then really those two Red Alliance robots continually, um, you know, passing and allowing Bread to be the complete cleanup robot. Um you know, blue kind of was just running their standard cycles while having some feeding mixed in with that. But I thought red did a good job of trying to capitalize those two feeding robots um, and allowing bread to really play that front core position and cleanup position to continue to ensure that they're getting those four piece amplified cycles. Um, you know, we saw similarly 254, 1678, that alliance running a similar strategy. I think they put up 189 was one of the higher matches that they had. I believe there was some fouls in there, but still a really high scoring match that we saw throughout the tournament. Um, you know, Red does a good job of, you know, really prioritizing flow as well. So you see the the second pick of the Red Alliance really going to that close driver station while uh, 581, um, you know, moves towards that close source side until they get some defense in there. They draw a foul right there here, you know, a minute 15 left to go. But, um, you know, I'm curious to see, is there some validity to two robots feeding moving into the championship this weekend? If you're paired up with a close enough front court robot, how does that look like, you know, moving forward and what we can take into that? Um, so that's kind of what I want to highlight out of this specific match. This was the first time, um, at least that I've seen really two feeding robots and one strictly playing, you know, clean up on that end. Um, Connor, I know you're at a district championship this weekend. Um, what did you see over in new England or how does that correlate to, you know, how, or what do you think about this specific strategy that we saw at East Bay this weekend? Yeah, I, I think feeding will still probably take a, you know, be a large factor at in divisional play at champs i'm not entirely too sure if it's going to be the the two robot feeding one cleanup meta um if that is the case 
and you're on the opposing alliance, you should be you should make it a priority from when you're running your cycles to snatch up those notes. Uh, because you see you see the the number one and number two alliances at East Bay just basically running that completely undefended, racking up that score. Uh, one thing that you do notice uh, between those two feeding robots is that they're throwing it over towards in front of that driver station next to the amp. So nice big choke hold uh, choke point right there because there is that protected zone in front of the amp. So that cleanup robot has a lot of, uh, has a nice keep out zone to be able to pick up those notes and be able to shuttle them into the amp and into the speaker. Uh, but not all of those notes actually end up going over there as you see some of them kind of bounce off the subwoofer or kind of like fall just short in front of the uh, in front of the stage. Those might be some prime game pieces to go and pick up. We didn't see in something entirely like that at New England District Championship, but we did see a decent amount of the shuttling um, as well. You, you saw it a lot with the number two alliance on Ganson. Uh, 131 Chaos was just basically exclusively running cycles while uh, Buck's Wrath was playing cleanup and then 1729 was playing strictly defense uh just playing that uh that chokehold uh zone right in front of the opposing alliances uh source and the uh in the stage um and then there there are a few other uh, my, my alliance did that as well at champs it worked out pretty well for us we were able to win a few matches off of it uh as the 8th seed so knocking the one seed down to the lower bracket so it, it's an effective strategy if you can play your cards right but you oh my you need oh my god you need to be on point the entire time yeah and one thing else i wanted to correlate you know too we saw some very high scores over in peach tree which i was really encouraged to see um from that district specifically i believe we saw upwards of 160 i know you know during saturday of msc that was one of the things that i saw i was like you know 160 in peach tree because we thought um, I believed at one point Michigan had the highest world score in Elims for like five or 10 minutes or something like that. I believe 35, 38 had set it over on consumers. And then quickly right after that, the PCH score came out, um, you know, where they were utilizing a, a similar feeding strategy, but having a large stockpile of notes moving into that way. So excited to see that from Peachtree as well. I know Ontario, we saw a lot of high scores, PNW, we saw a lot of high scores. And I think that's really just the nature of this game where, you know, we're moving forward into more competitive events um, and, you know, other regionals that happen throughout the, throughout the weekend. And, um, you know, I, am excited to see where this game is going to evolve into the championship, but um, Alex, I know we, I saw you this past weekend at the Michigan state championship. Congrats again on your big win. Um, I'd like to just kind of get a deep dive. You know, what was it like playing with 27? I know from 33, we got to play with 27 earlier in the year um, and they're a great team to play with, but just wanted to kind of break down, um, you know, where Hemlock and that Rush Alliance started with um, your third partner. And I know you guys had to go into the lower in your division um, and then work your way back up to get to that finale. So Alex, I'll kind of hand it to you and then we'll lead off um, from where you go. Yeah, um, your audio actually cut out a little bit on my end, so I, I wasn't too sure about the end there. But um, yeah, happy to happy to talk about the HSC field to start that field was absolutely insane the alliances there were crazy um definitely shout out to alliance number two alliance number seven alliance number eight i mean their auton was crazy as well um but to start we uh we went ahead and picked wings of fire 51 because they were able to amp with us and um that was definitely a big big factor we wanted three robots capable of amping we wanted a great driver we wanted them to be able to double climb with us and rush and then also being able to have a compatible auto and or or able to make one on the fly um so our strategy going in to hsc field was three offense and basically it was um three lanes of robot traffic and we were able to con basically continue that up until we played alliance um yeah, i believe it was alliance number seven that knocked us down into the lower bracket and then um, finally in match 13 um, in the lower bracket, we had to switch things up a little bit uh, about halfway through the match. With a minute left, we were, um, sorry, jumping around a little bit, Tyler, but in match 13, um, we uh, we had to switch it up. Wings of Fire had to play a little bit of defense to in order to get that lead back. Um, so it's just absolutely insane. And, and one thing that um, it's very hard to tell in this match, but uh, we actually didn't have vision this entire match. So all those shots are manual, and that's also why our Auton missed. So 
um, absolutely crazy comeback. And um, it, it was just an absolute thrill to get out of that match alone. And then uh, obviously working our way into the finals, we went up against a, an incredible alliance with Holy Freeze and, um, and um, I believe it was tractor technicians. So absolutely thrilled, thrilled play against those guys and um, could not be happier. Um, and then finally in uh, um, Fimstein's, um, we, we decided to keep the same strategy moving forward, the three offense strategy. And we decided that um, if we encountered feeding, we decided to do a little bit of bump and run action. And um, beyond that, uh, same strategy throughout. And obviously at 76, 60, they, they really shook things up for us. Playing yeah. defense. Man, that was, that was extremely tough. Best defense I've seen all year. Um, like no doubt about it. They, they shut down rush for a considerable amount of time. They shut down us wings. Um, so hats off to them. That was absolutely incredible. Um, and then one final thing I wanted to point out was uh, Russia's amp mech. Uh, it was it ended up being like about fifty percent accurate in the in Fimstein, so they ended up just dropping notes off in, in, if the sure. amplification wasn't ready. So really cool uh, on the fly strategy change, and uh, really hats off to the Alliance and really really competitive play all around. All the alliances were fantastic. Yeah, and I think one thing that you kind of highlighted too is that pivot of strategy where you had 51 move into that. Um, I know that's one thing that we tried to run um, on the 33 perspective over on DTE in the finals was kind of having our third robot play like a hybrid defense where they were sitting in the wing zone to try and eliminate or try and decrease that feeding strategy and then you know create some clog in the lanes. And then they were only scoring in the speaker when we were amplified. So they would grab a piece, play some hybrid defense, and then they would score in the speaker um, when we're amplified so all in general we had a little bit lower of scores um but in turn you know we were also decreasing the alliance of scores that we were playing so um one thing that i thought was cool too is i believe finals one is still the highest combined score in the world uh don't fact check me on that at least it was at one point i believe it still is but i'm not 100 sure so that was cool to see you know robots in michigan getting those high scores um i know the the intense you know the arena was super intense when the, the scores ended 135 to 130 on the on the board i believe is what it was at the end of the match so that was cool to see just from a perspective of you know being a spectator and whatnot but again hats off to um you know hemlocks hemlock gray matter and you know wings of fire and rush for a great run i know that that's you know those that stretch of matches on saturday is a grind <laughs> from a team yeah, perspective right. because it's just constant you hardly get a lunch because as soon as you know, DT ended, you guys were out there calibrating and then running practice matches next thing right after that to make sure your robots were set. So uh, hats off again, and thanks for giving us a, a deep dive into that. Um, but before we go ahead and jump into our next topic, we'll go ahead and bring Tyler on to introduce our first giveaway of the night. Yeah, our first giveaway of the evening is going to be by our friends at Sword Dry Specialties. We're going to win another one of those awesome SDS timeline t-shirts so if you're interested in winning uh you see the default size is extra small that's what you get if you don't tell us what you want so go ahead and type in sds timeline in chat right now that's your opportunity to win uh and don't forget if you are subscribed to our youtube channel which is absolutely free to do click that subscribe button right now stay up to date on all fun content we have a lot of behind the bumpers videos coming out uh past championships as well too so keep an eye out for that but type that in chat right now and you'll get three times luck if you are a youtube subscriber so thanks again to sword eye specialties we'll draw for that after our next uh topic awesome thanks tyler and thanks again to our friends at uh, sds so jumping into our seventh topic of the night um it's going to be a discussion related to match schedule um it's one of the hot topics in frc and you know how people can live or die by the match schedule and what that looks like so I'm curious to see on, you know, where the discussion leads us. Uh, the biggest thing for me from a match schedule perspective, um, the anecdotal that I'm going to kind of go to is the championship. Um, the overall topic was introduced um, by uh, Nugget Sill, I believe is how you pronounce that. But um, what it looks like is, you know, th they feel that they're going to address to, you know, address a persistent issue that is hindering certain experiences at the competition. Um, and, you know, it's how the match schedule is kind of formulated and what that looks like. Um, from my perspective, you know, it's really dependent on, you know, again, it's a random, it's outlined in the manual, how it's attacked, but it's an, you know, randomized situation in which that looks like, um, what that determines is, you know, my biggest thing at the championship level is a lot of the rankings that are seen in that standpoint are completely dependent on the match schedule and what that looks like. Right. So, because you're, you know, we're competing with 60, between 60 and 80 teams in your division, 
and you're only getting 10 qualification matches, um, a lot of the times your rankings is really dependent on what your match schedule looks like. So you might get a robot that um, might not be top 10 in the division, but had a great schedule and in turn is going to end up ranked top 10. Um, an overwhelming support of 77%. So I was showing on screen here that first should change the current schedule making system. Um, and, you know, outlining that thread is some possible ways to solve that. But Connor, I'll start with you. I know we both agree that the match schedule is an interesting way to go about it and it should really change. But um, I'd be curious to see what your opinions are and how you think that it could possibly, um, you know, it could possibly be improved. It just needs to change regardless. Three years in a row at District Champs have we had just probably the worst qual schedules ever known to man. I mean, all all three years, we're in the top six for hardest schedules per Statbotics, and we just miss out on so many district points to help us get to the World Championship. It, this year, we, we missed out by 12. If we won two more matches or even four ranking points additionally, that would have put us over. That robot would be going. It's the best robot that my team has ever made, and it's not going. Um, I don't. I'm calling. I'm calling BS on randomness. I don't think it's random. Uh, 2023 at District Champs, and we had four matches against Mechanical Advantage. Uh, 166 Mechanical Advantage. We're best friends. We bounce uh, impact uh, stuff off of each other. Like we we practice together, we hang out together, we share ideas. We we love each other to death. But my God, do we hate seeing each other for four <sighs> matches in a row? Yeah, it's understandable. And also losing all of them, two of them by like one point. And then this past weekend we had two matches back to back against seventy eight, which we also love seventy eight. But it it doesn't feel random, especially like you know, there's so many teams. At, in a, at an event or in a division, like there's 48 teams in, in each division this year at, at New England Champs. Like, I should be able to see every team at least once and not have to see them again. Like, I, like it, if, I'm in, if I'm with a team in one match, but against them in the other, fine. Absolutely. No problem there. But I shouldn't have to be against them four or five times in a row. Or, you know, it's... There, there needs to be... I don't know if, it, if you can base off of it by EPA from prior year, or if you get to a certain point in the season where like you get to your district championship or you get to the, you get to the world championship and you can base it all off of uh, team performance from that year to make it a little bit more well-rounded. Yeah, sure. You, you might not see, you know, the, the best teams potentially seeding all the way at the top, but it sure as hell going to make for some interesting qual matches and for some interesting playoffs for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Alex, I'm sure Hemlock, you know, has had their fair share of difficult schedules. But um, what's your overall thought on the current way the match schedule is generated and some possible improvements that could be made? Yeah, I think it's it is a different story in the district system for sure. I mean, uh, we we don't experience the same thing Connor just did. Um, definitely. And I think I mean, there's there's ultimately two ways to control your destiny. And one of them is um, Matt's match schedule contribute like contributing your success enough to be a captain and then there's also performing well enough in those matches to be selected and i think um you know those are two very different things and one of those um at least at at champs um you just you're just relying on people being able to scout you correctly and you're you got to play to your strengths at champs you, you can't get talked out of doing things you're not comfortable with because that'll reflect badly on your scouting data um so that's kind of where I'm at with it. I do think um, I feel like we've been wronged in the past. Absolutely. Where we play like the top team on the field, like four times in a row. Um, so I, I completely get where you're coming from. I think um, inherently random means that some of that will happen. Um, so I do think um, having some of it based off the EPA would certainly make sense, um, especially that late in the year. Yeah, the question that I have, you know, from like a first perspective is because, you know, EPA is done from a third party standpoint. I, you know, granted, the people at Statbotics are great and it's super useful data, but, you know, trying to incorporate that into what that turns into. I apologize. My glucose monitor is telling me my sugar is high. Um, but, you know, it's an, it, how to inherently move that into a system where, you know, you're now, you know, EPA is game dependent, right? Like they use values that are based on data collected from the Blue Alliance standpoint and what that looks like. 
Um, so I'd be curious to see how they could incorporate that. But I agree with Alex, you know, because it is random, inherently you're going to get some of those opportunities. And that doesn't make it right. You know, I agree with you, Connor. Unfortunately, there are scenarios that your team goes through where you're stuck playing for, you know, you're playing four of the most elite teams at the event and you're not with them ever. I know when I was with 4130, that's how I always felt when the match schedule. We were always against the elite teams and never got to play with the elite teams, which is, you know, an unfortunate perspective. But, um, you know, I think this is definitely the list of, you know, that could, you know, in general move forward and what that looks like on how to, you know, improvise it. But, um, you know, Sean McNulty, you're welcome for covering the subject. Appreciate you creating the thread um, to bring a good discussion point. But um, with that being said, we're, before we go ahead and jump into our third topic of the night, we're going to go ahead and bring Tyler back on to draw for that giveaway and hear from our friends at Andy Mark. Yeah, once again, SCS Timeline was the keyword in order to uh, enter for the awesome shirt that they're uh, providing for us. If you do win, just a reminder, go to firstupdatesnow.com slash winner in order to claim. Once again, firstupdatesnow.com slash winner. And since you are winning a shirt, please put your size. Uh, Anna, A-N-A, congratulations to you. Uh, you are taking home this awesome uh, shirt from uh, Sword Dry Specialties. So go to firstupdatesnow.com slash winner. Say it with me, everybody. No. All right. So make sure you do that as well, too. Um, yeah. And a big uh, big shout out to our friends at uh, Annie Mark as well, too, for all our support they've been doing uh, for First Updates Now and Fun. Uh, an awesome company. Here's a little bit more about them and what they offer. We'd like to thank Annie Mark and AnnieMark.com for their continued support of fun content. AnnieMark.com is your one-stop shop for all your competition robotics needs. Featuring over 200 years of combined experience, AnnieMark has now been in business for 20 years, servicing first teams and beyond. From electrical and mechanical, anything you may need, go to AnnieMark.com to see how they can help your team and to get some of the best quality parts and the superior service that your team deserves. Awesome. Thanks again from our friends at AnnieMark. So jumping into our third topic of the night, I'm going to hand this one over to my co-host, Connor, talking about district championship and championship alliance selections. Yeah, so this is something that's kind of popped up. It's popped up a lot, at least in the New England district on my end in the New England Mentor Slack channel. Um, you know, some some events are like uh, Michigan State Champs, if I remember, if I know recall correctly you guys did your alliance selection friday night and then went yep. straight into playoff saturday yep. morning that is so a majority of uh district events and the world championship uh will have their uh their playoff or the alliance selection the morning of and then take a break like hour break or so and go right into playoffs um it's really about you know what is the right way to do that uh, i i kind of want to take a stab at that um i for one a little torn on this i like the uh, on the one hand of being able to select your partners that friday night and then you have so much time to prepare with mm -hmm. your partners to be able to form like the best strategy really be able to sleep on it wake up the next day and be like was that just the tired speaking am i being dumb yeah. is this the right is this the right thing to do because i i can imagine that some teams uh, including myself for those that pick that saturday morning and dive straight into it like that probably might not have been the best strategy and then boom you're quick oh and two right out of the playoffs mm -hmm. um but on the other hand picking that friday night in my opinion what about the teams that don't get picked like now you're just showing up to to that next day and it's just like mm -hmm. why am i here like i was sure. like god it's like god i hope i win an award and if i don't I could have just like I could have gone home the night before. I could have refunded hotels for a night. I could have gotten so much money back. Um, that's just that's a lot. Uh, uh, Alex, what do you think, man? Yeah, I think I think you hit it on the head right there. I think there's two very different options, and um, yeah, having a team not get selected like a Friday night at champs, and then have to sit there all day the next day. Um, I mean, granted, I mean, I would be pretty excited to watch those matches, but I completely understand where, like, um, if it's a team that's just there um, that didn't get selected. I mean, it's it's harder to sit through and watch. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I agree, like, at Michigan State Champs, being able to select your alliance Friday night and having all night to talk strategy, and that really levels up the play the next morning. I mean, everyone comes out firing. Um, if there's problems, you're able to identify those. And um, I... I mean, I tend to lean towards having that Friday night alliance selection just because of that reason. It, I mean, it mm -hmm. enhances the play the next morning. Sure. Yeah. So, I mean, from my perspective, I think there's two ways to look at it. Um, I think 
from a f- team competing standpoint, I really like Friday night um, for the same you know reasons that Alex had stated. What I think sucks is trying to make the pick list for a Friday night selection. Um, yeah. You know, I like Alex. I'm sure, like you know, Thursday night the way qualifications are laying now, you get like two to three matches per team. <laughs> you can kind of create you know, a preliminary schedule of like what that looks like. But then sometimes there's latency issues in MSC. So like the first match for some teams are rough sometimes because they might have to get replayed at the end of Friday. But um, so that part is rough, you know, Friday night. And then it's essentially like, okay, all Friday during lunch, we're spending time looking at our scouting meeting, looking at the data that came in Friday morning. What does that look like? Um, But then, you know, the plus side is like Alex said, you get that, you know, Friday night to completely work with your alliances. Um, and then come in Saturday morning, reconvene, and then move forward. What I like about Friday night, at, you know, what I like or what I don't like about champs being Saturday, that I like where Friday would solve this problem, is if you're the first captain, you basically can go to be like your first pick and be like, hey, I'm picking you tomorrow. Let's go and strategize and get ahead of everybody else because nobody else what's going to happen. Nobody else knows what's going to happen down the chain. And you and I can sit and strategize for six hours and then, you know, reconvene our data and find the most ideal third robot that is going to help our strategy. So in that sense, with champ selection being Saturday morning, you're essentially giving a free six hours or however much time they want to spend into the wee hours of the morning, free time that, you know, essentially is a disadvantage to every other Alliance at the tournament. Now, Granted, some teams at the top usually communicate with each other sometimes, and you know they may be like, "Hey, we're going to go with this team." And then you're, if you're the two captain, you can kind of do the same thing. But past mm-hmm. that point, that's kind of where it gets really hairy. So, from that standpoint, I really like the Friday night, um, just because it gives all alliances an equitable amount of time to strategy that you know every alliance gets. But I do like the idea of Saturday because it allows you to really reconvene from scout a scouting data perspective. So that's kind of my overall thoughts on the topic, but. Um, Tyler, you also had a question you wanted to jump in for? Well, yeah, the question I want to ask for those, uh, for you two who are at Michigan in particular, having a, uh, a Friday night alliance selection was, did you notice like a significant less number of teams attending on Saturday with a lot of teams like not being qualified? Like, I know there's always people like, we're going to stick around for awards, but in my mm-hmm. experience, at least in reality, some teams do go home and I'm not saying that's good or bad or anything like that, but did you, did either one of you two notice a discernible difference, uh, in that at all? So I had noticed there was a couple teams across the pit aisle from us that had went home. But to be honest with you, and like I don't mean any ill will by this, but the teams that do go home, um, they're really just making room for all the extra people that come Saturday at MSC. Like Alex, you know, like the the like the stands are rough on Thursday and Friday. There is apps like we are creating like fire hazard codes on Saturday at MSC because of how many people are there. Like there are thousands and thousands of people you know, at the event, you're walking a half a mile from the venue to park. So that way you can walk, you know, like the university campus has shuttles running from a mile and a half away because there's no more parking near the, near the rider center of where the event's at. So, um, Alex, did you notice anything in on the HSC field of people leaving early? No, I, I really didn't. I, I think there may have been just a handful of teams, maybe not less than a handful of teams that left early, um, like cleared out their pits, but looking at the stands, there's no way you'd be able to tell. I mean, that looked, it was way more packed Saturday. There's just Mm -hmm. no, no doubt in my mind and way louder than way louder than Friday as always. For sure. Yeah. Connor, do you guys do a line selection Friday night or Saturday morning? We do it Saturday morning. Okay. Um, So it's kind of interesting because you said that like, oh, I you'll kind of like figure out like the first pick or like the second pick. When I went to bed Friday night, I knew the first five picks on my division. Oh, there you go. <laughs> and, and so uh, it was funny sitting there with my students and I would be like, I would be like, I bet you 20 bucks, but I didn't actually like, obviously, yeah. bet, but I'm like, I bet you 20 bucks. I know who the first five are. And I just list them <laughs> off in order and they just watch it go down in the line. And they're just like, That's why funny. does he know so much? And I was just like, <laughs> I have friends. It's all about who, you know, not what you know. Exactly. Right? So, interesting. <laughs> so how much time do they give you in between alliance selection and when matches started? Uh, I think we had about an hour, hour and a half. So okay. uh, typically it, it was a little bit more than what we got at like our district qualifying events. Sometimes for that, it was like 45 to an hour. Um, I, sure. I I almost kind of forgot, like, how, like didn't realize how much time I had at district champs. Cause it was like, we went through our match strategy before we broke down our pit and brought it closer to our field. Um, and then we finished everything up. And I checked the time, like, all right. 
I guess I can like go get breakfast or something or yeah. uh, order Domino's, have it delivered in 30 <laughs> minutes. Like yeah, I, I had a lot of time. It was nice. For sure. Awesome. All right, well, before we go ahead and jump into our final topic of the night, we'll go ahead and bring Tether back on to introduce our second giveaway of the night from Cross the Road Electronics. Yeah, our friends at uh, CTRE are giving away another one of those Phoenix Pro licenses that can be good for the 2025 season. Uh, by the way, if you do win this, uh, CTRE will send you an email as well, too, to get some additional details. So just a heads up for that. Um, so go ahead and type in excellent, excellent, something like that. However it's spelled out there. Type that out, and that's what you're going to put in chat uh, in order to win uh, for that as well. Uh, CTRE is uh, finger licking good, and they do have their uh, ship the champs available. So make sure you, uh, <laughs> if you are attending championships, make sure you uh, check out their ship the champs as well too. So they're they're they're, uh, they're prompt for us, by the way, is to add in chicken puns. So, <laughs> so we we'll try to add some in as well too. So type in excellent. That's your keyword. I will draw for that in a little bit. Oh, that was a good one. I'll give you props for that one, Tyler. All right, final topic of the night. Uh, we're going to let Connor uh, go ahead and lead this one as well. But uh, we're going to talk about some fun things if in Houston uh, for your team to do if you have qualified for the championship next week. So you qualified for Houston. Or maybe you're just going as a spectator like me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of teams will, will come in or spectators will come in like a, f a couple days before, maybe spend like a day or two after champs. You know, it's... It's a big experience for a lot of teams. They're traveling to a place that they don't really ever get to go to, or maybe this is their first time, or you have, or you're a team that this is your first time you've qualified for the championship, and you got students who have never left home, or like this is their first flight somewhere. Like this, this is going to be a time to remember. So you want to go and do some fun stuff. So we have provided an awesome website called TripAdvisor, which is showing <laughs> some of the uh, the top things that you can do as a group. Uh, so, you know, you have like the, uh, the Museum of Natural Science. Everyone loves the uh, Space Center Houston. There's a zoo. There's an aquarium. You could go to a Bucky's. Uh, you you can go a, to a Bucky's. You, you can go to a Bucky's, and I'm going <laughs> to go to a Bucky's. I rented a Tesla for a few days, and I am okay. excited. So... <laughs> Uh, going away from my muscle car for a, for a few days. Um, there's also an ast a few Astros games, and they're dirt yeah. cheap because it's the Houston trash cans. I mean, Astros. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, shots fired. Yeah, shots fired. I love it. I love it. Um, one of my favorite things that I'm really looking forward to this year is going to the 118 Open House uh that's something that they that 118 opened their doors last year and they're doing it not once but twice this year once before and once after champs and i can't wait to take a tour of their facility uh tuesday night and see a bunch of people so uh nick well uh, wh what do you like to do in houston when you go yeah so we, the past two years we've flown in um we as in 33 have flown in a tuesday morning and allowed you know the kids to kind of have a day to get situated to you know being back in houston um, it's a, like, it's an understatement. It's a super stressful week on students, you know, especially if you're competing week six and then kind of moving forward into the, you know, next week, it's, it's a rough week to be a student, um, and trying to make sure that you got your priorities in line. So we like to go a day early and, you know, ensure that our students get situated, allow them to catch up on homework and, you know, what that looks like. Um, we actually got to go to the 118 facility last year and we were there for three hours. Um, and it was really cool to talk to, you know, Jenna and Ryan and Ethan and all the 118 folks over there to just learn more about their processes, get to tour their facility. Um, it's, it's insane. Like, I don't really know, like you want to talk about a model FRC shop on like what you want to strive for. Like it's, it's the 118 facility there. It's top notch in every way. Um, we took a lot of uh, really cool inspirational stuff on how they organize some things like, the way they organize their HTD belts on this belt rack and um, all of their uh, specific power tools, storage. It's, it's really interesting. So yeah, Connor, when you get to go, be sure to check that out. But that was one of the cool things that we took away. Um, we've also been to a Houston Trash Astros game. Um, we did that in 2023 or 2022, I believe, as well. Um, Taylor Swift was in Houston last year. Unfortunately, I don't believe she's coming this year. So we're going, we'll have to not worry about that. But um, we'll be going back to 118's shop on Tuesday night. Um, Galveston is also a short drive away. Uh, it's only about an hour or two, I think. So if you're into beaches and uh, piers, I believe Galveston is going to be a good spot for you as well. But um, Alex, is you know, Hemlock, uh, you know, do any sightseeing before they, um, you know, get ready for the week of competition? No, it's all it's all uh, no fun. OK, no all fun. business only. Yeah, <laughs> business only. But now it's it's great. Um, usually uh, 
a good portion of the team goes down Tuesday and is able to hit up the zoo and yeah, um, a lot of people go to Astros games or trash can games and um, <laughs> of course uh, just enjoying um, each other's company and for sure eating good food and um, definitely taking time throughout the day to um, just just be out in the courtyard. It's you know eighty degree weather and just just soak it in the sun because usually mm-hmm. the weather in Michigan is pretty rough right now. Yeah, for sure. And I believe uh, Tyler said uh, Houston uh, Dynamo FC also has a home game on the 13th. So I believe that is soccer. FC is soccer. For yeah, the it, it's soccer. There's oh, stadiums yeah. right nearby uh, where Georgia. Yeah, it's like is NRG, too. right? I think is what it's yep. called. Yeah. So mm-hmm. it's right around the corner. But yeah. So, you know, if you're into soccer, soccer might be a good fit, too. But um, yeah, the, the other... it's all week. Right. OK, that's cool. Oh. The good thing is if you're into food and you like barbecue, Texas is your spot. There are some great barbecue spots also around uh around george r brown if you haven't got a chance to take a look but um before we go ahead and wrap the show let's go ahead and bring tyler back on to draw for that giveaway that we mentioned earlier from ctr yeah once again uh ex- excellent i can't even say it right it's the uh, keyword <laughs> uh once again for that uh, if, if you do win please go to firstupdatesnow.com slash winner uh, so we get all that info um just a reminder it is champs coming up very soon so we usually say two weeks for things it might be a little delayed but we'll get stuff out as quickly as possible and i know our vendors will as well too so uh bradley gray congratulations to you you are taking Ooh-hoo. home this uh, phoenix pro license so go to first updates now dot com uh, slash winner in order to claim and thanks again to both CTRE and SDS uh, for the giveaway sign Andy Mark for awesome support and also big shout out as well too to our new member uh, who is somebody who's supporting fun on YouTube and that's uh, Carl as well too as everybody else uh, and anybody else who has uh, stepped up as well we really appreciate it plus you get early access to some of our videos we're putting out awesome thanks Tyler and thanks again to our friends at CTRE Thanks, everybody, for tuning into FRC Roundup. Special thanks to all those who clicked that subscribe button or stepped up to help fund by becoming a fund member or supporter by clicking the join button. Your support really helps us continue to make great content. Don't forget, you can watch FRC Roundup archive at youtube.com forward slash first updates now and watch live Mondays during the competition season. Thank you to Alex, our guest, from coming on again tonight. And on behalf of our producer, Tyler Olds, my co-host, Connor, and all fun correspondents, I'm Nick Jr., and thanks for watching. Good luck to all teams competing at this year's first championship. This show will be back Monday night following the world championships. We won't be on next Monday, but we'll be on the Monday after the championship. And big thanks to our moderators in chat as well. See you next time where we take a look at what is going on with First Robotics on FRC Roundup. Thanks, everyone. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your robotics competition needs. Celebrating 20 years of quality robotics parts and superior service, Animark employees have over 200 years of first-team experience. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to animark.com for high-quality and affordable solutions.